G'day brothers and sisters, this is The Other Paul and you are watching the first episode of a recurring video series I am starting called Recommended Sources. Each episode will recommend a certain book that I find extremely useful in study of various fields and wish to recommend to other people who are also studying in those same fields. This first episode features Eusebius the Church History, a modern translation and commentary on Eusebius of Caesarea's church history by historian Paul L. Meyer. Before we get to this specific edition, we'll first look at some context. Eusebius was a Christian historian of the early 4th century, largely considered the pioneer of church or ecclesiastical history as a genre, which covers events from within the historic Christian churches. He himself wrote a 10-volume history of the church, covering events from the birth of Christ up to partway through the reign of Constantine the Great in the early 4th century, just before the Council of Nicaea. He summarizes the purpose of his work in the first half of his prologue, which reads as follows from Meyer's edition. It is my purpose to record the successions from the holy apostles and the periods extending from our Saviour's time to our own, the many important events that occurred in the history of the Church, those who were distinguished in its leadership at the most famous locations, those who in each generation proclaimed the word of God by speech or pen, the names, number, and ages of those who, driven by love for novelty to the extremity of error, have announced themselves as sources of knowledge falsely so called, while ravaging Christ's flock mercilessly, like ferocious wolves. The fate that overtook the whole after their plot against our Saviour. The occasions and times of the hostilities waged by heathen against the divine word and the heroism of those who fought to defend it, sometimes through torture and blood. The martyrdoms of our own time and the gracious deliverance provided by our Saviour and Lord, Jesus Christ of God, who is my starting point. Now, there is a lot to say about the work itself, including many scholarly debates on the accuracy of Eusebius, both in specific accounts and in general. Nonetheless, wherever you land on those debates, Eusebius will remain an absolutely essential source that must be consulted in key topics of church history. A key reason for this is his copious citation and quotation of primary sources, more so than many other highly regarded ancient historians, including many sources which we do not possess or wouldn't even know exist if not for his own testimony. A major example of this can be seen in his account of the Easter controversy in the late 2nd century, about which I have a short documentary which I recommend you watch if the topic itself interests you. Now, on Paul Meyer's edition of Eusebius, there are a number of notable features. First, he gives a very clear description of his translation philosophy. He starts by noting the difficulty of balancing readability with faithfulness to the original text, and to this effect, he gives the most based quote I have ever seen in mainstream academia. A translation is very much like a woman. If it is beautiful, it is not faithful. If it is faithful, it is not beautiful. An additional problem is Eusebius' own excess verbiage. His Greek can be very bloated, and some English translations choose to preserve this clunkiness for the sake of accuracy, which I do respect quite a bit. But Maya instead chooses to give a translation of dynamic equivalence, wherein he preserves the meaning of the given passage whilst cutting down on his verbiage and making it much more readable for regular people. Now, I personally prefer clunkier translations that retain formal equivalence with the original text, since I believe this makes them much safer for scholarly study outside of the original text, and we can certainly see this with a certain number of dynamically equivalent biblical translations. However, Maya shows that his form of dynamic equivalence avoids elaborating on the text and just shows what it says in a simpler form. I have not checked the whole book against the standard Greek edition, so take that as you will, and nor do I plan to do that given the time commitment for such a task, but from the examples Maya does give in his introduction, and from checking passages with which I am familiar, his translation appears solid and reliable, even for serious study. On top of the translation, Maya provides explanatory footnotes throughout the text and entire commentary essays at the end of each chapter or book. These serve to further illuminate what is being discussed in Eusebius' work and give very helpful background information on a number of key issues. Maya also provides very precise formatting for quotes by Eusebius. 
That is, whenever Eusebius quotes a source, it is placed in block quotes with an indent clearly distinguishing it from Eusebius' own words. Likewise, Maya italicizes every reference to the title of a work by Eusebius. One final excellent feature that this edition has, which sets it apart from all other editions that I know of, is the inclusion of maps and photographs throughout the entire work, showing off what Eusebius is discussing at the given point, providing a great reminder of the grounded historical reality of what Eusebius is discussing. This edition of Eusebius' History provides excellent and readable translation along with tons of notes, commentary, and visual supplements that help the reader comprehend the nature of Eusebius' work, even with little to no prior study of such. I particularly recommend reading through the entire introduction of the work as it provides plenty of critical and helpful background knowledge on the work, as well as how the translator is approaching it. If you are even mildly interested in ancient church history, then you must read Eusebius' church history. And in particular, I highly recommend this edition for average readers, but even so for the small scholarly minded if they just want a better formatted, easy to read version of the work and wish to take a break from the more scholarly and clunky editions out there. This edition is fairly popular and so can be very easily found on websites like Amazon and Book Depository and many others. For viewers who are fellow Australians, you can pick up this work at Kurong and Reformers Bookshop with the paperback edition going for $27.99 and the hardback going for $39.99, which is more than worth it for the content that you get. However, I do strongly recommend investing the extra money into the hardback edition, both due to the inherent durability of hardback books, but also since from my own personal look at the paperback edition, it appears to have its photographs in black and white, whilst the hardback is full color and thus much more visually appealing. Thank you so much for watching this book recommendation. If this has inspired you to purchase the book, then please leave a comment down below. I would find this highly encouraging and it may also further inspire others to buy the book. And as usual, a colossal thanks to my supporters on Subscribestar. I'm reorienting the channel back towards more scripted videos as it once was, and this is in large part made possible by my financial supporters. And so if you wish to help me in the development of this channel and turn it into a proper income, which means much more time producing content, then you can become a supporter at Subscribestar through the link in the description below. Again, thank you so much to my existing supporters and thank you viewer for watching the video. I hope you have a lovely day or evening. God bless.